Hey guys, how's it going? Dude here, I am back with another video in a brand new studio. And today, we're going to be talking about the Slender Man stabbing case. Before we jump into that case though, if you could do me a massive favour, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, thank you so much. Let's jump into this case. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the case, I feel like it's important to understand what Slender Man actually is. So, the Slender Man is a fictional supernatural character that originated as a creature creepypasta internet meme created by something awful forum user Eric Knudsen is also known as Victor Surge. This was in 2009. He is depicted as a thin, unnaturally tall humanoid with a featureless head and face wearing a black suit. Stories of the Slenderman commonly feature him stalking, abducting and traumatizing people, particularly children. So that is Slender Man. I'm sure you've heard of Slender Man, but maybe you weren't aware of his origins, and maybe you weren't aware that he is indeed a fictional character. Facts that are incredibly important in today's case. This case centers around three friends, Peyton, Morgan, and Anissa. We'll begin with Morgan. Morgan was a bit of a loner, a strange child. Now, some of her peers at school and some of the teachers believed that she was kind of a quirky character, but being quirky for attention, bit of an attention seeker at school. However, Morgan would later be diagnosed with a mental illness, more specifically schizophrenia. Now, Morgan's behavior at school would consist of things like chasing other students around, barking at them. She would claim fictional characters were chasing her, characters like Snape from the Harry Potter books. And also, she was once found playing with blood by other students. There was a plethora of very, very odd actions and behaviors by Morgan. She was also suspended from school because she once brought in a rubber mallet, and when quiz by the headmaster as to why she brought a rubber mallet into school. She said that it was to defend herself. Now, when she was told that she would be suspended, apparently Morgan broke down and began frantically talking to herself, something that the headmaster noted himself as odd and informed the parents. As Morgan got older, she began looking at dark websites and took a fascination with the website Creepy Pasta Wiki. Now, Peyton in the fourth grade noticed that Morgan didn't have any friends and she would often see her sitting alone. Now, Peyton, being the lovely, caring individual that she was, felt that everyone deserved to have a friend. So she befriended Morgan, began hanging out with her, overlooked some of her odd behaviors, would do sleepovers, play outside, and draw with her. Now, of course, befriending Morgan for Peyton would be a near fatal mistake. This friendship took place between the ages of 10 and 12 years old. However, apparently the friendship began to go downhill incredibly quickly, especially in the sixth grade when Anissa emerged on the scene. Now, Anissa introduced Morgan to the creepypasta of the Slender Man, and the two began a deep, dark fascination with the fictional creature. However, naively, both believed the Slender Man to be real. Their fascination turned to fear when they realized that in their heads they would need to satiate Slender Man's need for victims, more specifically child victims. And so they put a name to that victim in their heads and that victim would be their friend, Peyton. So the two began planning the murder of Peyton. Bearing in mind, this plan originated around December or January, and the attack took place in May. So this was months in the making. Now, the reason they were doing this, like I say, was to satiate the need of Slender Man. But apparently, this would double up as protection for themselves against Slender Man and protection for their families. But it went deeper than that, because they felt like if they offered this victim to Slender Man, then they could become one of his servants or one of his proxies, as they described it. A devout follower allowed to live with Slender Man in Slender Man's mansion. 
And apparently in Slender Man's mansion, there was a load of different creepy pasta creatures residing. Uh, so this was Morgan and Anissa's plan. Now, according to Morgan, this was initially Anissa's idea. Now, Peyton did say that when she saw this fascination with Slender Man taking place, a fascination that she didn't have herself. In fact, she saw it as a really scary story and it scared her so much that she had to go to her mum and ask if Slender Man was real, of which her mother said, no, of course it's not real, which put Peyton's mind at rest. But because of this fascination the two had, Peyton wanted out of the friendship with Morgan. She didn't really consider Anissa her friend. She just saw Anissa as really bad for Morgan, but she wanted away from Morgan herself. However, Morgan managed to manipulate and guilt trip Peyton into sticking around. In the interview years after the attack, Peyton did describe her relationship with Anissa as follows. I didn't like Anissa at all. I just hung out with her because I knew that Morgan really loved her as a friend, but she was always cruel to me. I feel like she was jealous that Morgan was friends with me and her. Now, unfortunately, as Morgan and Anissa's fascination with the Slender Man grew, as did their dark bond. The day before the attack took place, Anissa and Peyton were invited to Morgan's 12th birthday party. This consisted of roller skating at a local roller skate rink and then going to Morgan's sleepover, a slumber party. Now apparently normally at these kind of sleepovers, of which they've had loads in the past, Morgan would be very, very keen to stay up as late as possible, you know, do an all-nighter as you did as kids. I know I certainly had plenty of sleepovers where we attempted to do an all-nighter. For some reason it's just what kids do. But being 27 now, if I see past 2am, I know that I'm going to have a really tired week. But anyway, they do this sleepover, but we Weirdly, Morgan wants to go to sleep early. Very uncharacteristic of her. Now, the reason why she wanted to go to sleep early was because the initial plan was for Anissa and Morgan to kill Peyton in her sleep. However, they bottled this idea and Peyton wakes up the following morning. Now, Anissa and Morgan are already awake. So Peyton gets up and looks for them. Turns out they're downstairs on the computer. They eat donuts because I guess birthday breakfast, why not? And they head over to the park. Now this is where Morgan and Anissa have now planned the attack to take place. Initially, they go to a public toilet and try and lure Peyton in there to kill her in one of the bathroom stalls so that they can leave her dead body on one of the toilets and then crawl underneath the locked stall and leave her body there, I guess. However, in an attempt to knock her out, Anissa hits Peyton in the head, but it can't be too hard. What on earth are you doing? To which Anissa says, which apparently was quite characteristic, and she did this quite a lot. She said that she was bored and was just looking for something to do. So Peyton didn't think too much of it. There was a lot of tension in the bathroom, but in the end, they left the public toilets to go and play hide and seek outside. Anissa and Morgan decided to take Peyton into the more wooded area of the park so that they could, well, hide the body easier. So it was decided that Morgan would be the seeker and Anissa and Peyton would go and hide. Anissa tricks Peyton into laying on the ground saying, cover yourself in sticks and foliage, you'll be harder to see. And it is at this point that Morgan reveals that she packed in a backpack a kitchen knife and she says disturbingly don't be afraid I'm just a kitty cat and begins furiously stabbing Peyton 19 times in total now in the interrogation tapes is revealed the whole kitty cat weird line what the origins of that is was that Morgan decided that when she becomes Slender Man's proxy, a servant of Slender Man, she would draw cat whiskers on her face and that would kind of be her catchphrase before killing people. Don't be afraid, I'm just a kitty cat. Very, very disturbing indeed. But back to the attack. So Peyton has just been stabbed 19 times. She's still alive, but she is definitely 
definitely in survival mode. She begins screaming and the girls tell her to lay down, stop screaming, you'll slow down the blood flow, we're going to go and get help. Now instinctually, Peyton knew this was absolute rubbish and the girls just left her there to die. So unbelievably, miraculously, Peyton has the strength after being stabbed 19 times to crawl her way out of the wooded area onto a grass bank in view of a road where a cyclist goes past, sees her, calls an ambulance, calls the police, and she is rushed to the emergency room to have emergency surgery. Now, the majority of the injuries were just in soft tissue on her legs and on her arms. However, two wounds in particular, one was a hair's width, less than a millimetre away from puncturing her heart. Had it have done that, less than a millimetre, she would have 100% have died. Another stab wound went through her diaphragm and cut into her liver and her stomach. Two very vital organs but amazingly she survived a six hour surgery and whilst all this surgery was going on the hunt for the two girls was on because even though she was fighting to survive Peyton managed to tell authorities that her two friends were the perpetrators behind this stabbing. Girls walked for five miles and were eventually picked up in some kind of furniture store. Apparently they were on their way looking for Slender Man's mansion, which they imagined would kind of miraculously appear because they had killed Peyton for him. But instead, they're captured by the police because of course Slender Man isn't real. So then the interrogation takes place and it is absolutely fascinating because first of all they're very forthcoming in what they have done. Morgan shows zero empathy whatsoever and acts very oddly including doing things like when the interrogator was out of the room she was dancing around the interrogation room considering she's just stabbed one of her best friends nearly to death. And Nissa on the other hand was very scared, very anxious and very worried but a lot of the things that she was saying was all about self-preservation. So although she seemed worried, I think she was more not worried about, you know, or feeling guilty for what she had done, but more feeling sorry for herself that they'd been caught. Inevitably, the pair were charged. Morgan with attempted first-degree homicide and Anissa with attempted second-degree homicide. They were both tried as adults due to the severity of the crime. A few years later in 2017, Anissa pled guilty to being a party to attempted second degree homicide. The jury found her not guilty by mental disease or defect. Morgan attempted a plea which meant she didn't go to trial but would instead be evaluated by psychiatrists to see how long she should spend in a mental hospital. She was found not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect just like Anissa. Schizophrenia diagnosis was confirmed. Anissa was sentenced to 20 five years to life and Morgan given 40 years to life to be served in a mental hospital. On March 10th, 2021, Anissa was ordered to be released by Judge Michael Boren. On September 13th, 2021, Anissa was released with multiple stipulations to include 24-hour GPS monitoring requiring her to not leave Wakusha County without permission. Anissa will also have her internet usage monitored and will not be allowed to use any forms of social media. Anissa will also be required to take medication and will be personally escorted to regular counselling sessions by a caseworker. She will also be required to live with her father during her probation which will end when she is 37 years old. Morgan remains institutionalized to this day. So there we go, guys. That was the Slender Man stabbing case. What do we think about this crazy case? Thankfully, Peyton managed to survive her horrific attack and in interviews done recently, she is doing better than ever and just wants to put the whole thing behind her. And apparently, due to what she went through, is really motivated to work in the medical field and help others. What do you guys think about Anissa being released? There are some psychologists out there and, and observational videos done on the interrogation tapes that imply that perhaps Anissa was actually the mastermind 
behind it all and kind of manipulated Morgan, who clearly had mental health issues such as the diagnosis of schizophrenia, etc., and was a vulnerable person easily manipulated into doing Anissa's bidding. What do you guys think about that? Of course, that is just opinions of some psychologists online, but it's just fascinating to entertain the thought. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Tune in again next time. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out all the social stuff down below. I've got a Facebook page, things like that. I really appreciate you guys. I'll see you very soon. Sweet one. Geese.